Welcome to Hustle and Heart TV. I'm Darius Chisholm. Want to give a huge thank you to all of our international subscribers. Thank you for downloading and watching and listening to our show. All right, now if you're in the restaurant industry, maybe you're thinking about opening up a restaurant or expanding, grab pen and paper. You want to pay special attention to my next guest. If you live in Pittsburgh, you may have already dined at one of his restaurants, Atria's, Juniper Grill, or Ditka's. They're just part of Pat McDonald's growing empire of restaurants and businesses. You know, if you live outside of Pittsburgh and maybe you've eaten at a Chi Chi's restaurant in the past, then you've experienced Pat. He was involved in opening some 80 Chi Chi's restaurants in the past, so clearly he's a man who knows a thing or two about opening up restaurants. Well, today he's busy carving out ways to better serve his diners as well as eating away at the competition. And on this episode, Pat dishes on financing and money management in the restaurant industry and why staying away from cheesy gimmicks is the best way to bring in the dough. You're watching Hustle and Heart TV, a video podcast show that spotlights expert advice from top money earners, successful entrepreneurs, superstar network marketers, and leading authorities in business and marketing. I'm Darius Chisholm. I'm inviting you into my home and I'm bridging my own personal success as an entrepreneur, MLMer, news anchor, and now video podcast show host to help you leverage more tools and resources, make more money, and generate more ways to take action, become a rock star, and love your journey. All right, Pat, thanks so much for being on Hustle and Heart TV. We really appreciate it. My pleasure. Now, Pat, um, you have had stellar success in the restaurant industry, owning several different restaurants, over 40 years as part of it. You have to share with us, what are your secret ingredients to success in the restaurant industry? Well, I think uh, for anyone, first you have to love what you do. And uh, fortunately, I, I love what I do and I, I still do. And as long as I do and I'm able to, I'll, I'll, I'll stick with it. But uh, that, I think that's the, the main ingredient. Um, you know, the restaurant business is, uh, you know, tough business as any business is. And people always tell me, you know, you're, you're in the toughest business there is. And to me, I don't look at it that way. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, anyone that's going to, you know, take the jump and be in business is, you know, you're going to take a risk and it's going to be difficult. And um, so I don't look at the restaurant business as being any more difficult. And you have to be in it for the long haul. Most business owners, of course, get started with this vision and this dream and they think about where can I take this? Where am I going? But I would assume that, particularly in the restaurant industry, it takes a few years before you even get your bearings financially as well as in the marketplace. How do you, how do you continue to love it during the tough times? Well, I mean, I think uh, that's, that's uh, uh, an opportunity for all of us is, you know, how do you deal with adversity? How do you deal with things whenever they're not going so good? It's easy to deal with things when they are going good. But, uh, you know, how do you do that? And, uh, you know, you just got to be, per I mean, you got to persevere. You got to be confident. You, um, you, you know, you've got to let your employees know that, you know, things are going to be okay and, and that, um, you know, you're strong and, and you're going to make it. Uh, you know, 2008, whenever the market crashed, it was a very difficult time for us. And, it had all of us look in the mirror, and um, you know we we discovered a lot of things that we weren't doing right, and it and we buckled down, and actually 2009 was a very good year for us, and so um, I, I think you you just have to uh, be confident and be positive, and um, and you know get through it. Give us your backstory. Um, how did you get started in the industry, and um, you know from you know when you got started to where you are now? Did you see it really going this way? No, I didn't actually. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I went to school at uh, Alderdice High School. I was born and raised in Pittsburgh, grew up in the city, and uh, went to school at Alderdice. And then I went to Penn State. And um, I actually enrolled in the uh, School of Architecture. And when I went to my pre-registration, I realized, whoa, I, I can't, I, I'm not going to be able to do this. So I, I just went into the College of uh, Business and uh, majored in business, and then uh, ultimately picked up uh, hotel and restaurant management, food service and housing administration was what it was called. But my, my family was never in the business. I was never, uh, uh, you know, really I worked as a dishwasher and busboy and those things, but uh, nothing really drove me to it. Just uh, it so happened and, um, and that was that, but it was not uh, something I thought about. But when you started, when you took a hold of your first restaurant or at mm -hmm. least started working in the industry, um, 
give us that part of the story because obviously a lot of people go to college to, to get a degree, but mm -hmm. they don't necessarily end up in it and stay in that career for a long time. Mm -hmm. You got started at which restaurants and um, uh, certainly give us the, the path that it's taken since then. Well, um, my first job out of college was with uh, steak and ale restaurants. Um, and um, it was really a cutting edge uh, casual dining uh, restaurant and it just had a great reputation. And back then, you know, the restaurant industry was a lot different. You know, casual dining really wasn't in existence. You know, it was, uh, you know, mainly independent restaurants and those things. And so the chain restaurants were more fast food than anything. And um, you know, Steak and Ale was a casual dining restaurant that um, um, I was fortunate to get a job and, and uh, I, I was uh, relocated to Minnesota, Minneapolis, Bloomington, Minnesota. And um, I was there for about six years and um, uh, I discovered Chi Chi's. Um, and Chi Chi's was uh, really my first business. That uh, the first Chi Chi's in the country actually opened up in Minnesota, and most people wouldn't know that. Well, you have a Mexican restaurant in Minnesota, right? <laughs> but that was a, that was the first one, and um, I was enamored by it. And I had the opportunity to come home <clears throat> to Pittsburgh, and I hooked up with a group that had the uh, franchise rights here in Pittsburgh. Uh, my father passed away, so my mother was uh, by herself, and you know that was a that was a reason to come back home. And um, she was very mad at me for leaving steak and ale and going to a Mexican restaurant. Back then, people didn't even know what nachos were, you know. So, uh, and I had a nice job at steak and ale, but I came back to, to pursue that. And if, if I understand this right, some 80 Chi Chi's you had some affiliation with in terms of rolling right. them out and franchising Open them. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's uh, a yeah. lot of restaurants. Yeah, it is. Yes. Uh, you know, I was young, um, energetic, was a great new concept. And, uh, you know, I didn't have really any responsibilities. I didn't have a family. I wasn't married. Um, and, um, so I traveled a lot and I opened these restaurants. It was a great learning experience. It, it was, I was very young, you know, probably too young, really. <laughs> that, but, uh, you know, I learned and um, it was a great experience, fantastic experience. Too young to know better. Yeah, I guess. what they right. say, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no excuses on that. But right. it led you to obviously having steak in some 80 restaurants and then um, moving into the Atrius family. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us how that went down. Well, actually, um, uh, from Chi Chi's, I did a development agreement with Chili's. Um, I brought Chili's to Pittsburgh in 1987, and uh, that's when Chili's was a small, 30 restaurant chain. And um, and so, um, you know, I did that for about five years. I developed uh, about five restaurants in uh, Ohio and Pennsylvania, and um, and then I went to uh, work with Boston Market. I was an area developer for Boston Market, and um, that was not such an enjoyable situation. Why? Um, uh, because the culture and um, it was really based on uh, opening restaurants and transactions and it was just not what I was used to and, and um, uh, you know just really didn't have a culture. It was it was very um, sterile and, and um, I was traveling a lot. Um, uh, I got married. I had a young son and um, I decided that you know what I'm not going to do this traveling. I'm not going to do this anymore and so uh, uh, Nick Atria, who owned Atria at, at the time, he and I got to know each other uh, because I had a Boston market right next door to the Atrias in Mount Lebanon. So we got to know each other a little bit and he approached me and asked if I wanted to buy his restaurant. And, and, and the concept of Atrias is um, neighborhood friendly, um, which is, you know, obviously mm -hmm. there are tons of restaurants in neighborhoods, but the, mm -hmm. the concept behind it is very interesting. And when people walk in, they really feel like they've, and some of the other restaurants feel mm -hmm. as though they've just come to their neighbor's house, so to speak, mm -hmm. to have dinner. Right. Do you find that that has made um, a particular um, namesake, if you will, in, in the restaurant industry, particularly here in the Pittsburgh area? Well, Atria is, is uh, you know, in fact, uh, we, we have the name Atria is because I asked Nick Atria if I could keep the name. And at the time, you know, of course, he didn't know me very well, and it's a family name. And so we, uh, we said we'll give it a three-year <clears throat> trial basis to see, you know, if he wanted to truly allow me to keep the name. And I, I felt that I wanted to keep the name because it had, um, it, it had value. Um, you know, Atria is, was a, a neighborhood place, and that was really because of Nick Atria. Um, you know, he was there all the time. He worked behind the bar. He knew everyone. And yeah, when you walked in there, people knew who you were. And, um, and so he started that tradition, and, um, and we just kept, uh, kept up with it. But you saw fit to keeping it. Why? Well, um, uh, you, you know, I just felt it was a wholesome type place. It was a place where I wanted to, to be, a place to hang my hat. And, um, and you know, it was... Um, it was it was a good decision to do it that way, but um, 
you know, I, I had no desire to uh, build it into, you know, eight restaurants we have right now, what have you. I just wanted to have a place that I could call my own. And, uh, and Nick Attry was the one that really started that and uh, started that tradition. And, and um, you know, he was the face. And I then became the face, my wife and I and uh, my partners. All right. Well, when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about the face and the man and how you have the energy to continue to run these very successful businesses. Um, we'll get more on that when we come back on the other side of the break. How does he do it? I mean, this man has got nearly 50 years in the restaurant industry and he's still going strong. It's, it's amazing. When we come back, Pat is going to tell us more about loving what you do and momentum. And he also gives us some strategies on creating a competitive edge in restaurant branding. And he shares that if you're ready to open up your first or your fifth restaurant, you'll want to employ what he calls crafting an experience for your customer as the standout feature you can't afford not to do. The award-winning Savoy restaurant has become synonymous with fine dining, upscale ambiance, and a great destination for local and national celebrities to enjoy the night in style. The Savoy has won multiple Savor Pittsburgh awards for its delicious menu. Our wine list was awarded Wine Spectator's 2012 Award of Excellence. And the Savoy has also won the American Institute of Architects People's Choice Award for its beautiful architecture and design. For dinner reservations and more info, log on to SavoyPGH.com. Trouble can find anyone. At Frank Walker Law, we take the time to understand your situation and work tirelessly on your behalf. Hard-hitting representation when you need it the most. A real law firm getting real results. So, Pat, I have to ask, how do you, you keep the stamina? I mean, obviously, you're quite busy. You're running around to several different restaurants. Um, I'm sure between family and other obligations, you're a man on the go. How do you do it? Well, again, you know, it starts with, do you like what you do? And, and I do. I love uh, spending time in the restaurants. Uh, uh, I love, uh, you know, spending time with our employees, our management. Uh, I, I love to see, uh, you know, our, our people grow. And we, uh, you, you know, probably 80% of the management that we have in our, in our restaurants are from within. Meaning, you know, they started, people start off as, you know, an hourly employee, whether it be a cook or a food server or a bartender, and they moved up. And it's just very rewarding to, to see. Uh, I spent a lot of time in Chicago because we have the Dicka restaurants and we have three restaurants in, in Chicago. So uh, uh, I spent a lot of time there. I love Chicago. I love the competition. Chicago is a great restaurant town. Um, you know, so every time I'm in Chicago, I'm, I'm out looking at things and, and um, you know, just getting ideas and seeing what other people are doing. So uh, other restaurants, it's, it's just a great city. and. Uh, yeah, I'm energized by it. You know, I try to keep myself in shape. You know, I work out every morning. I'm fortunate to have my office right over here at uh, PNC with um, with the Pirates, and uh, you know, there's a nice fitness room there. And so I come in early in the morning and I work out and you know get the day going. And you have so. to create that level of balance. Yeah. And in business, um, we find that if you don't, you burn out quickly. And so balance is important. It gives you an edge. You know, I mean, it. Um, you know, so many times, you, you know, physical fitness is. It's a way of life, and um, and you know if you're physically fit, then you know then you're able to you know be mentally fit. In in my opinion, let's talk about your unique way of branding. Um, when you think about the three restaurants, Juniper Grill, Atria's, Ditka's, they all obviously are different. And right. in, in your approach in branding, how do you how do you do that? And and do you do you set this out for a year? Is it five years? How do you fully market each of them separately and continue with the success? Well, they're, they're certainly distinct uh, brands. Uh, Atria is, um, I would consider, you know, American, uh, upscale casual, um, you know, a little bit higher food quality and a little bit higher price point than a casual uh, dining experience. Um, Juniper Grill was founded on the basis of uh, I wanted to get something uh, that was less complex, um, a smaller building. Uh, our Juniper Grills are under 4,000 square feet, and, um, you know, so it's less management, it's less... Uh, it's less employees, it's less menu, and it's easier to operate. And, um, and so everything is less, uh, you know, the investment and, and so forth. Dicka's is a higher end experience. And, um, and people still want that higher end experience. You know, they're willing to, to pay for it and experience that. And um, if, for instance, our one here in Pittsburgh, uh, you know, our weekday business is busier than our weekends because of all the business travel. And, um, uh, you know, so there's still that entertaining and, and um, 
uh, people want the higher end wines and, and that sort of thing and they they pay for it but they're very distinct brands and um, and we market them you know you, you market them differently when you lay out your marketing plan though is it laid out for years to come is it a couple of months I mean how when you get with your management team what's the focus in terms of long-term marketing well um, we, we normally do it by by the year um, you know, marketing too is menu development and engineering and those sorts of things. Um, refreshing of the uh, buildings. We just did a refreshing of our uh, O'Hara Township uh, restaurant and Murraysville is going through that now, keeping them fresh and, and you know, evolving and not, not staying the same. Um, so a lot of that's within, with, with uh, the menu and, um, you know, keeping things within the, the brand, uh, but, but still showing people that we're moving uh, forward with different things. With each of the restaurants, you import a, a different approach to um, management or proprietorship. Um, if I understand, so when you bring in a, a new owner or you know someone that you bring in to partner with, it's a different approach because you want them vested in it. You want them to live mm -hmm. in the neighborhood. Right. Um, is that customary in the restaurant industry or is it something that you thought of and, and have you found that that has been, is that a tribute to your success? Well, I, I think any time that uh, you get uh, someone to invest with you, be partners with you, it, it makes a difference. And um, and yeah, yes, uh, we we ask that the uh, the proprietors live in the in the neighborhood, so you do your uh, daily needs. You know, whether where where you get your hair cut or whether you go shopping and you know your pharmacies, uh, everything. I mean, you're part of the community. Your kids go to school there, and. I, I think it is important, and you get to know people, and you know you're the face of the of the restaurant, and I believe that that's the key to success in any restaurant as well as you have a face there, and so to be in the neighborhood to have uh, what I call skin in the game, you know you make an investment, and that investment's meant to pay off for you, and um, you know you're, it's a different level of commitment, and and our people like it too. That leveraging. That mm -hmm. allows you to leverage, obviously, um, other people and their talent and their mm -hmm. success, but it gives you a little bit of freedom to keep rolling and moving into mm -hmm. new projects. Right. Um, and, um, you know, when you're invested, you, you have a different approach to things. Um, you're just not an employee. And it, it's really good for the soul, for the proprietors, that they feel like, I'm the owner. And they could say that they're the owner. This is my restaurant. And I, I feel like that's very important. And it, uh, it gives you a different edge. Uh, for sure, and um, and yes, definitely believe in that. It was not my idea. Actually, it was uh, based on um, some good friends of mine who were the founders of Outback Steakhouse, and uh, they really were the ones that came upon make an investment, and then you know, it's a five-year contract. And but you found that obviously that's worked well yes. in the situations that yeah, and that makes sense. And you know, it, it's also part of the profile that uh, you know, oftentimes, well, I want to save for a house, I want to buy a new car, I want to do the same. Well, you know, maybe you just can't do that. You know, if you want to invest in the business, you just might have to make a different, uh, take a different approach, make a sacrifice. You may not get that new car. <laughs> you know, you put it in the business. Yeah. It's a great leadership, um, mm -hmm. you know, way. It's it's showing in this industry a different model, perhaps, but one that obviously has proven successful for you. Mm -hmm. But it allows you to to help to lead others into the industry mm -hmm. and get their feet wet and still be involved and mm -hmm. obviously have some skin in the deal, as you right. point yeah, out. Right. Too. Yes. Yeah. What, though, on the flip side, would be some of the reasons why many restaurants fail? I mean, there's the, the countless stories of those that have been great, and you think they'll right. be around, and all of a sudden the doors are closed. What happens? Well, um, I, I think, number one, uh, people get in the restaurant business for the wrong reasons. Um, for some reason, people want to own a restaurant. <laughs> they want to own a bar. And, um, and so they get into it, and it's really not their livelihood. It's not what they've been trained to do and I think that's where a lot of the bad rap on the restaurant industry is, is taken where these independents come in and they're they're in and out, they're out but it's because it, they're absentee owners or they just don't know what uh, uh, you know it'd be me trying to do your job you know I, I wouldn't know a th first thing about that but uh, you know for some reason you know people under, understand the restaurant business they know it at least they think they do what good food is what good service is and so they get into it knowing well, I know what what we're supposed to do, but then to do it is, is more difficult. Um, I think some of the chain restaurants, it's based really on leadership, on culture. You know, you just don't have a culture, and people just don't like working for the company. It's, you know, you hear the, you know, corporate uh, all the time. You know that uh, it's just not 
you know, very uh, warm and fuzzy. It's, you don't feel, you feel like a number. You feel like, you know, it's like you're not, um, you're not part of the team. And I think a lot of people or a lot of the companies just lose that culture and they think more about bottom line and, and they get away from really what's driving their business and it's the people um, as much as anything. And, and it's important in business, obviously, to keep that focus on everyone, from the, the person who's washing the dishes mm -hmm. to the GM to everyone in mm -hmm. between, because that level of, of uh, commitment from everyone is what it takes to have a successful restaurant. Oh, for sure. And, um, you know, if you, if you have happy employees, you know, it's, it's, I always say, I want raving employees, uh, you know, and that'll create raving, raving fans. Uh, if your employees are happy and, you know, they come to work and they want to be there and... Um, you know, that is, that is such a difference. That's the edge, is, you know, having have employees that really want to be there. But, you know, so many people hate their jobs. Uh, you, you know, they just don't like going to work. And so if you can create an environment where, you know what, I, I like coming here. And it'll make all the difference in the it world. Um, we're going to take a break, but sure. when we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about ways, if you're thinking about opening a restaurant or maybe growing and expanding your restaurant, um, some ways that Pat will share with us, some surefire uh, ways that you can help to continue your success in the restaurant industry. Stay with us. Welcome to Smoke Cigar Shop and Lounge. Come smoke your ass off. Come for the knowledge and stay for the experience. With 15 years in the cigar business, we are here to help you find just the right cigar for you or a gift for someone else. We have cigars to fit any budget and palette, from super premium to hard to find boutique brands. A comfortable lounge to enjoy your cigars, free Wi-Fi, and BYOB with Cork B. Sit back and relax and get the full experience. There's always a lot going on at Smoke Cigar Shop. Sports, news, great conversation, or meetings with your coworkers. To stay on top of all of our events and specials, visit us at SmokeCigarShop.com or on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Smoke Cigar Shop. Download our app at the App Store or Google Play Store. We're open 10 to 9 during the week and until 10 Friday and Saturday, Sunday 12 to 5. Remember, Smoke Cigar Shop and Lounge. Smoke your ash off with fine butts and hot ashes. We probably have a, a lot of people who are watching our shows, um, who are business owners, maybe restaurant owners, wannabe restaurant owners, people who are maybe struggling in the industry. Give us some surefire ways um, that, that people in the restaurant industry should be uh, pursuing in order to be successful. Well, you know, again, it, it starts with people. Um, you know, nowadays, if you don't have good food, you're not going to be in the business. So, so good food has to be, I mean, it's a given. Um, but what you do from there, it's creating an experience. And, um, you know, I think that that's the most important thing for uh, anyone in the, in the business is um, if you ask uh, at, at employee orientations, I'll, I'll ask a question and I'll ask for volunteers and I ask, what was your most memorable restaurant experience and why? And I promise you, 95% of the time, it has nothing to do about the food. It's all about, well, you know, they, you know, it's a place where I'm recognized. It's a place where, you know, I feel comfortable. It's a place where people know me. It's a place where I know people, uh, you know, the, the, they celebrate my, you know, birthday. And I mean, they just create an experience for me. And, um, and I think really it's about, you know, culture um, and training and uh, having people that want to be there again. You know, you know, I, I say that, you um, you know, we all carry our burdens and, you know, when we walk through the door coming into our place of work, you know, we're, we, we have things on our mind, uh, you know, whatever it may, may be, you know, just life's opportunities and, you know, um, so I say, you know, people come to our restaurant to take an hour, an hour and a half to forget about those things and it's our job to, you know, take it off their shoulders and allow them to experience you know, an hour and a half of peace, <laughs> so to speak. But uh, it's more about people than anything. Speaking of things being on your shoulder, let's talk about um, maybe some challenges, maybe one or two of them that um, were tough to face, that in business might have derailed you. Uh, if, if you've had any, and if so, what were they, and how'd you overcome it? Well, you, you know, um, it's, it's, uh, it's difficult to get financing. It, it's difficult to borrow. Um, and uh, so how do you raise money? How do you, uh, uh, you know, how do you create cash flow and keep cash flow? How do you, you know, you 
pay your employees, you pay your vendors, you pay your landlords and so forth. And so there are times that it becomes a, a struggle and, um, you, you know, you just need to persevere. Um, but, um, you know, to, to be well capitalized is, is very important. You know, don't start a project without knowing that you have the right capital. So when we open a restaurant, we won't open a restaurant until we sort of have the money in the bank, you know, whether it be through, you know, raising money or landlord contributions or what have you, but we won't, we won't open a restaurant on a, on a string. We'll make sure that we're very, very well capitalized. You know, challenges right now in the business are, uh, you know, commodity prices, you know, you've, I'm sure you go to a grocery store and you see what, uh, you know, what, uh, what's going on out there. Commodities, all commodities are going up, not just meat, but, uh, you know, produce and dairy and pork and chicken and, and so, you know, how do you maintain um, a price point? Because they can't all be passed on to the uh, customer. And, you know, how do you do that? That's a big challenge. You can do that through menu engineering and, uh, you know, working on, on the mix and trying to sell more profitable items and market those things and place those, those things. But uh, to raise prices is, is uh, you know, that's the last resort. Yeah, particularly even, I mean, the economy has been, you know, moving right along, but any major dip really affects everything, and people then decide, I'm going to hold my dollars back, I won't be going out to eat this week, and then, of course, the trickle happens, and you've got to, you're forced to, you know, think about raising the prices if you have to, but if you can't get people through the door, then what do you do? What do you do? Yeah. Um, you know, whether it be filling your gas tank, I mean, we're, we're those, uh, you know, dollars that people have that... The they extra decide. dollars, yeah. Right. You know, so, uh, you know, how do you get those? And, you know, for us being an independent, um, you know, it's hard to compete with uh, the casual chains that are doing the two for 20 and, you know, just giving things away. We can't afford to do that. And so how do you compete and how do you, how do you uh, succeed in that environment? Because and how do you do that? Because that, that is, you know, between the Groupons and the Living Socials and the two for 20s and, you know, of course, people holding on to the extra dollars. How do you stay? In well, it? you'll never see us do that, okay? And we've stuck with that for the last 16 years. And, you know, I, I refuse. I, I think whenever you uh, discount, you're devaluing your brand. I mean, you're, you're essentially telling people that what you're charging is not worth it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's devaluing. And so how do you create the value with the experience? And so how do you, how do, how do you have people feel good? Because d decision time is whenever the check comes. Okay, so if you're out with another couple and, uh, you know, the check comes and you say, well, it's X number of dollars per couple, then you go, wow, that was a pretty good deal, or whoa, <clears throat> that was pretty expensive. And for what we got, you know, that's decision time. And so to, to try to make people feel good about, I paid this and um, it was worth it, and I'm going to come back for uh, whatever reason it was, that I think it's really about the experience. And experience and value and good food and right. good service is really what it boils down to right. when it's all said That's and done. It's hard to do. Yeah, I, I would imagine that. Um, we often on our show uh, do something called hustle and heart tips, obviously named after the, the show. And so give us, because we've pulled a lot out in the last 20 minutes or so, but give us one good hustle tip for someone going into the restaurant industry and or trying to grow and expand What's a good hustle tip? And then what's a hard tip? The hard tip, of course, would be something around love and passion right. and, and really loving what you're doing. Well, hustle is, uh, again, going into it prepared. Um, you know, there are a number of aspects to it. Do you have, you know, do you have a, a brand? Do you have a concept? Do you, um, have you tested it? Have you worked with it before opening? And um, I could tell you that before we opened our first atria is that we had meetings at my house, uh, you know, twice a week. And we'd cut food, and what we mean by cutting is you're tasting, and and um, you know everything had to make the cut, and uh, so being prepared is, is very important. Being well capitalized, you know, not going into it with, you know, just on a, a string. You know, you've, you've just got to have you've got to have the ability to to get through a rough time. If you're opening slow, or if uh, you know things aren't going quite right, you, you don't want to be. As soon as you start having to struggle for those dollars then you start giving up things that you should not give up. You know, whether it be cutting your payroll or cutting the quality or those sorts of things, just being very well prepared for that. And then um, making sure that you like what you do. 
and you have people that like their jobs. Really important in business. You better love what you're doing right. yeah. and, and, and never give up on that part. That's well, I can for tell sure. that you love what you're doing. Yeah, I do. Yeah, right. absolutely. And I love to be able to um, speak with people like mm -hmm. yourself, um, to share your story and, of course, to share uh, what it means to be successful in business. So um, with that, we're going to wrap this uh, show up, but mm -hmm. we appreciate you being with us. Any final words you'd like to share? Uh, no, just uh, thanks for having me. It's, uh, it's been enjoyable. And uh, you talked something about heart. And um, I, I will say this, that um, heart is truly what it's about. And, um, you know, we have a principle called value of the person. <clears throat> and it's, uh, and it's a, uh, a subject and it's a company that my wife founded with her father about 40 years ago. And it's about love, dignity, and respect. And so we try to live by those principles of love, dignity, and respect. And it's to build relationships at the workplace and at home with your kids, with your spouse, with your family. And it really, really works. And uh, so we, we preach that. That's wonderful. And yeah. that is, in fact, as we've mm -hmm. talked about this, this entire half hour, definitely about the hustle yeah. and certainly about the heart. So mm -hmm. thanks so much, Pat, Great. for being Thank on you. the show. We Thank appreciate you it. Thank you. Thanks, Gary. Love, dignity, and respect, three powerful words and a powerful mantra to live our life by and run our businesses by. Pat, thank you so much for being a part of the show. I really do appreciate it. I hope that you're enjoying our episodes and I would love to hear from you. Send me an email, write a review, let us know if there's a topic that you're interested in us covering and I'd be happy to do that for you. Looking forward to getting your responses and I do want to thank you for leaving them. The Pink House, a 100-year-old attraction filled with the sweet, yummy smell of award-winning Wagner's chocolate. This unique boutique is unlike any candy shop you've ever experienced. The indulgent aroma delights you as you wander from room to room, and you'll discover Wagner's is more than just chocolate. Shop for your own candy-making supplies, visit the gift shop, book your next party, and be a kid again in the fun ice cream parlor where they serve hot and cold drinks and Hershey's ice cream. The signature chocolates are handmade with care and attention to detail. You'll be amazed at the favorite offerings that keep generations returning to this family-owned gym. Chocolate-covered pretzels and Twinkies, caramel apples, homemade biscotti, and so much more. This family-friendly experience is worth the stop in Finleyville to experience a 37-year-old tradition. Or order online at thepinkhouse.biz and give a call to 724-348-2238. Hi, I'm Jan, rapreneur extraordinaire. What does that mean? It means days filled with friendships, a job that's all about fun, and a life of freedom. But it wasn't always this way. Not long ago, I was a stressed out working mom with a boring job just trying to make ends meet. When I saw this amazing picture on Facebook, it said if I had just $25 and 45 minutes, this crazy wrap thing could tighten, tone, and firm my skin. I thought, no way, those results are unbelievable. So I had to try it. I went to a wrap party, and in just 45 minutes, I was experiencing those unbelievable results for myself. I found out I could join the party with my own website, have my own parties, and make some fast cash by having fun with my friends. I shared it with my Facebook friends and they all wanted to try it. I just followed the company's simple three steps to success, and before I knew it, I was earning free wraps and cash, and having a blast doing it. Best of all, the checks kept getting bigger and bigger every month. I was able to pay off my credit cards and student loans with this crazy wrap thing. Now I've quit my job. I'm able to spend more time with my kids and my family is living debt free. I've got the life I've always dreamed of and you can have it too. To start redreaming your life, join the party today. It's simple. Try it. You'll like it. It works. Get more information about It Works Global. Go to simplesuccessfromhome.com or call 412-692-1600. Hi, my name is Sabrina Saunders and I'm Executive Director of Strong Women, Strong Girls. And we help women and girls raise ambition so that they can be positive contributors to the community. And I'll see you on the next episode of Hustle and Heart TV.